Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning. We give a special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield Clark County area or looking for a new church home, we invite you to make St. John your new church home. Uh, one change in uh, worship this morning uh, for the reader, uh, our granddaughter, Kate, will be reading one of the lessons, uh, and Jane will be reading the other one. We went up for Kate's first communion. She read one of the lessons during the first communion mass. I said something to her, but Katie, I'd love to have you come and read at church. And so the, they spent the week with it. She said, Papa, you want me to uh, read the lesson at church? And so I had Charlie get on the phone and Phyllis graciously agreed to step aside and let Katie do it. So Katie will be reading our second lesson. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the Order of Confession and Forgiveness on page 94 in the front of your worship book. And I invite those who came without difficulty to please stay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Flood the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is August 3rd, 19, 2014. We're located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Uh, our 8 o'clock service this summer until Labor Day is at the Melody Drive-In on East National Road.
turn to page two in your worship book. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Gina Pollock. A reading from Isaiah. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the water. And you that have no money, come by me. Come by wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, your love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a community for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he 
he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. granddaughter of Pastor Pollock. A reading from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am now lying. My, my conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people. My kind are according to the flesh. They are as then belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. And to them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. special music for the day. Thank you, James. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, as most of you know, we had our annual church picnic. And the weather held off and cooperated. And for those of us who gathered, we had a good time. Church picnics are an annual thing in the history of the church of East here in America. And on Monday morning, I came into the office and looked at the lessons for today. Noticed how we were reading about Jesus feeding the 5,000. And it made me start thinking about how picnics are interwoven into the fabric of our nation. That almost every, every area of our nation has picnics. Companies have picnics. Unions have picnics, fraternal organizations have picnics, families have picnics, congregations have picnics. It's just a, something that we constantly do. I can still remember when I was growing up on my grandmother's farm in Fairdale, Kentucky, that on Memorial Day, July 4th, and Labor Day, we always had a picnic, usually with my dad's silver sister and her husband and their kids. If the weather was nice, we had a picnic set up under this big oak tree that was by the barn. It was such a big tree that it would shade almost the entire half of the barn yard. If the weather was threatening, we would go into the, uh, have it on the patio on the side of the farmhouse. But there was always something that was just routine. When the holidays came, you had a picnic. We then moved off my grandmother's farm into the city, so we would have picnics in city parks. When we went on vacation, Mom would always pack a picnic basket. We'd stop by the roadside park and have lunch. All of us can remember picnics, and all of us probably have memories of what we think was the greatest picnic that we enjoyed. But no picnic, no matter how much you enjoy, can compare to the one we read about today in our gospel lesson. Jesus has learned about the beheading of John the Baptist. It has upset Jesus, and he goes off and wants to be alone, be by himself, because he knows that by the beheading of John the Baptist, this means now all focus will be on him and his public ministry. He's now going to start facing severe opposition from the Pharisees and the Sadducees, from the high priest. He's going to be having, which is never mentioned, uh, rarely do you ever hear mention, but he's going to become a target of spies of the Roman procurator Pontius Pilate to see just what kind of activity he is up to. And so he desires to go off by himself. So 
So he gets in a boat and starts sailing across the lake, but unfortunately, somehow the word gets out that he's doing this. So the people from the towns and villages run around the lake so that they're waiting for him when he comes ashore. And when he comes ashore, he sees all these people. Some of them have physical problems that need healing. And as we read uh, in our gospel lesson today, when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sin. That word translated as compassion. It's a Greek word that means to be filled with tenderness. It means a heart that goes out to others in their situation. It means to yearn with tender mercy. It means the deepest movement of emotions possible. It means a feeling so great as your whole inside of churning in this compassion for others. So Jesus heals those who are there, and the disciples tell him, say, look, Jesus, it's late. You need to send these people off. Let them go so they can go to the village and buy food to eat, take care of themselves. Jesus says, no, we're not going to send them away. Then you give them something to eat. And the disciples say, well, we don't have anything for them to eat. We got five loaves and two fish. How do we supply them? A meeting. And Jesus asked for him to bring it, the five loaves of the fish to him. And he blesses them, and as St. Matthew tells us in our gospel lesson this morning, 12 baskets were collected of food that was not eaten. And we are told that everyone ate and were filled. So the people had the greatest picnic ever as Jesus supplied their need. Now when we read this gospel lesson, we can look at it very narrowly and just look at it as another miracle of Jesus, which shows to us that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. But if we do that, we are missing out on some very important points that this gospel action wants us to understand. So let us look at the gospel lesson again. Let us look at this greatest picnic ever. The first thing we learn from this picnic is Jesus is the source of our food. Notice Jesus challenges the, the, the disciples. Says, you go, do not send them away. You give them something to eat. Well, he was challenging the disciples for a specific reason. And it's a lesson that we need to learn. We should know already, but sometimes we have to be constantly reminded. And that is, we cannot save ourselves, and we cannot solve the problems of the world ourselves. Jesus is the source of our food. Physical food and spiritual food. Jesus is the source of of blessing the fields of harvest so that we have food to eat. Jesus is the one who gives us spiritual food, word and sacrament, so that our spiritual lives may be strengthened, so that with that being strengthened by word and sacrament, we can face the changes and challenges of life. We can face the trials and tribulations that afflict us from time to time and not give up, not go in the town, instead stand firm in our faith in Jesus Christ. So the first message that this greatest picnic or best picnic ever is telling you is that Jesus is the source of our food, physical and spiritual. That Jesus is among us, constantly providing for our needs. That Jesus does not withdraw from us. When you study comparative religion, you study Hinduism and Buddhism and Taoism and Shintoism and Confucianism and Islam, Moodyism and Hare Krishna, even Judaism. You see the sense where God or the gods, Hindu, I think in Hinduism there's something like 33,000 gods and goddesses, but you see where they withdraw from. They basically have sent you some information, either through some sacred writings or through an individual, whatever. It's like, all right, this is what you got to do. Good luck. If you fulfill it all, you might make paradise. But if you make one little mistake and fall all the way back to the beginning, you got to start all over again. 
And so we do not see a loving God. I've told you before, when we were in the parish in Kentucky, we had a gentleman who had been in the Army Corps of Engineers. And then he retired and became a civilian employee of the Army Corps of Engineers and was sent to Saudi Arabia. Well, we, he, his outfit got to Saudi Arabia and tried to have the workers under them in Saudi Arabia be like all the standards we have under OSHA and all the other safety requirements. But because Islam teaches that everything is Allah's will, they wouldn't wear a hard hat on the gun. They wouldn't wear a safety belt when they scampered on a pole. They wouldn't use a harness when they were up high. They said, hey, it's Allah's will that the wrench falls off from above and hits me in the head and kills me. Yeah, it's Allah's will. And common sense. Let's wear a hard hat. Who said it was Allah's will? If someone was irresponsible, left a wrench out on a lid that the wind blew off. So we, we get a portrait of a God who doesn't care. But then we come to Christianity and we see a God who cares so much that he sent his only son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. We see a God who cares so much that he sent his only son to suffer on the cross, to pay the debt of sin that we owe, to wash us in the blood of the Lamb, so that instead of our sins being like scarlet, we are as white as the precious fallen sun. Instead of being sinners in the hands of an angry God, we are children of the Heavenly Father. Because Jesus is the source, the source of our salvation, the source of our food, physical and spiritual. He provides us with the strength we need. So this is why, again, he was challenging the disciples to let them understand that they could do nothing to save themselves. Jesus makes it clear throughout the Gospels that salvation is all by His action according to the will of His Heavenly Father. We don't do anything. We don't find Jesus. We don't have this born-again experience. God does it all. When Jesus met us with Nicodemus, and you hear so often John 3.3, Recap, you must be born again. Well, I don't know why so many of our translations do that. The word actually means born from above. The word is a word that indicates that action happening is by God. Nothing we do about it. It's God. It's God's plan of salvation. It's God's will of salvation. It's God's method of salvation. All we do is accept it, believe it, trust it, and cling to it. That is what Jesus is demonstrating by challenging the disciples. No matter how hard we work, no matter how hard we try, salvation is by grace through faith apart from works of law. Salvation comes through Jesus' death upon the cross, through his rising on that third day, through his ascending into heaven 40 days later. So we don't find Jesus. Jesus is lost. We don't have this force of born again experience. I heard a preacher one time try to say that everybody had, a, had to have a St. Paul Damascus Road experience. St. Paul is the one we read about in the Bible that has an experience like he had. You know, the first Pentecost, what do we read? St. Peter preached, believe in Jesus Christ, we say, 3,000 were baptized. They had a born again experience. They had a born from above experience, born through the sacrament of baptism, through water. We read of the Philippian jailer. Philippian jailer is going to kill himself. Paul says, hey, we're all here. Don't harm yourself. Philippian jailer brings his whole family and they're baptized. It's God's action. It's God reaching out to us. Reaching down to us. Jesus tells the parable of the lost sheep. Shepherd is 100 sheep, 99 in the fold, one's lost. That word lost in that indication means not somebody who wanders off. It means someone who is not part of the community of faith in Jesus Christ. It means someone who has failed to realize Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And so Jesus goes after them. Yeah, he's got 99 people here who proclaim him as Lord. He's got 99 people who recognize him as a Savior of the world. But his concern is about that one who hasn't accepted him yet. He tells us he knocks on the door of our heart until we open and let him in. See, Jesus is the provider, not us. It's grace. God's 
grace because of his great love for us. So different than what we see in the religion of the world. We notice in the best picnic ever that the disciples distribute the food. Well, at that point, they were distributing physical food to the people so they could eat. And as I said, we read where they were filled. But that also, again, is foreshadowing events after the crucifixion, resurrection, ascension of Jesus. And that is that the disciples would go from just distributing physical food to distributing word and sign, to distributing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, and with that, distributing the sacraments that Jesus gave to his church as well. The church continued to distribute food to those who were hungry. We read in Acts 6 how there, the Hellenistic Jews were complaining that they were being or were missing out on the daily distribution of food. And the apostles say, look, our job is to preach, to pray, to spread the gospel. Our duty is not to do acts of ministry. So choose from among yourselves seven men filled with the Holy Spirit. And we have our first deacons. One of which the most famous probably being Stephen first martyr of the church, or at least first martyr that we had on record was recognized as the first martyr. So the church continued to distribute food and help those who were hungry, but the church also distributes that spiritual food, the gospel, and the sacrament. And in this congregation, we continue to follow what the disciples did. We distribute food to the hungry through our pantry, through our rainbow table, through contributing to Lutheran world hunger. All those are ways we give physical food to those who are needed. But as a congregation, we also are to be distributing that spiritual food, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and sharing it with others. To continue to share that good news because, as it has been said, quote, there are none so good that they can save themselves, and none so bad that they cannot, that God cannot save them. There are none so good they can save themselves, and none so bad that Jesus cannot save them. So we have to keep distributing. We have to keep sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we learn from this best picnic ever that the people were satisfied. They were filled. So they ate and were filled, and they took up to a basket full of the fragments that remained. Now those who eat were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The word filled means to be satisfied. It means to um, have as much as you want. So no one went away hungry. Well, the world is crying out in spiritual need. The world is crying out in hunger to satisfy their spiritual thirst. And we have the drink that quenches all spiritual thirst, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we must share the Lord Jesus Christ with others. We must not be intimidated by those who tell us, oh, religion is something to keep yourself No, it's not, not when you're a Christian. Because Jesus gave us marching orders. Go into all the world. No, it's all the world. Not some of the world. Not just the European world. Not just the new world. All the world. That includes Asia, the Middle East, South America, the Pacific Islands, every continent, every village, every hamlet, every town. We're to go out and share that good news. And sometimes we may not even realize what God has given us in order to share that good news. I had a classmate in the seminary who was actually an ordained pastor from Tanzania, native Africa. And at that time, the old LCA had this program where they would bring Lutheran pastors from Africa over and let them spend a year in the seminary so they could take things that weren't offered to them when they were uh, and going through the seminary in their native country. So he was there at Hamlet with us, and he told us one night we were talking to him, and he told us about how he became a pastor. And he said when he started out, he thought he was being called to be a teacher. And so he was a school teacher in Tanzania. And in the school in which he taught, there were a lot of Muslims, Muslim children, parents. And he began to have a lot of success converting these Muslim children and parents to the Christian faith. 
He's having so much success that finally his congregation came to him and they said, look, Phil, his name was Phil. He said, Phil, you need to prayerfully consider whether or not the Holy Spirit is calling you to the gospel ministry. So we've never seen anyone have so much success converting Muslims as you are. And so after prayerfully considered, Philip heard the call into the gospel ministry. He became an ordained pastor in the Lutheran Church of Tanzania. And after he became a pastor, he continued to have great success in converting Muslims. And so we never know how God is going to use us. But what we do know is we are not to be satisfied simply with the fact that we are a child of Jesus Christ. We are a child of the Heavenly Father. But we must also have a desire to bring others into the fold. Again, a quote, a quote by one Christian author says, Those on the road to heaven will not be content to go very long in the fold. Those on the road to heaven will not be content to go alone. It's a motivation of the Christian faith that we want to bring others with us. Jesus died so that all could be saved, and so it's our responsibility to distribute that message of salvation to the rest of the world. This was the best picnic ever, as 5,000 men plus women and children were fed with five loaves and two fish, but it didn't end there. It foreshadows for us the responsibilities of the church, that we must distribute that good news of the gospel, the true spiritual food. We need to reach out to a world in need with the word it needs. And that word, of course, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as we read of this best picnic ever, as with just five loaves and two fish, Jesus fed all those people. We must also learn the lesson that is there for us, that we continue that distribution, distribute, distributing physical food, to those who are hungry, distributing the good news of the gospel of spiritual food to everyone, to the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now sing praise and thanksgiving, hymn number 689, in the back of your red.
true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people that our Heavenly Father's will may be accomplished in us. Our response today is, Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, we praise You for the beauty of the earth, the sea, and all creation. May all creation praise and glorify You. Hear us, O God, Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Your Son looked upon the crowds who saw Him and had compassion on Him. Open our hearts to extend compassion to the hungry, the thirsty, the lonely, those who live in despair and all gripped by depression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Son freed us from all sins, from death and the power of the devil, not with silver or gold, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Grant that all may know the good news of Christ so we may serve him in eternal righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. Prayer. Extend to caregivers and health care professionals the skills needed to bring healing to the sick. Bring your healing grace upon all who are ill, injured, or dying. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For out your grace upon the disciples of this congregation, we ask for your guidance in all of our different ministries, that they may glorify you in your Son, Jesus Christ. May all be blessed with your holy word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, keep us in the true faith until that day we are reunited with the saints who now rest from our labors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands we entrust our prayers and give thanks to you, the only God, for, our sted for your steadfast love endures forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care and prepare us now to, to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. St. John practices an open communion. For all those who are baptized and believe in Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, who believe his body and blood are truly present as we gather at this table, in our community age and our own individual congregation, you're invited and encouraged to come forward with us this day as we gather at the table of Lord. We continue our celebration with a great thanksgiving on page 6 in your worship. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels of the church on earth and the host of heaven, Praise your name and join her in any hymn. and the power and the glory. 
Lord Jesus Christ and His precious blood strengthen, and preserve you in true faith and the life eternal. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with His bread of life and cup of salvation, You have united us with Christ, making us one with all Your people. Now send us forth in the power of Your Spirit, that we may proclaim Your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We conclude our celebration with For All Your Saints Award, hymn number 427, in the back of your worship, hymn number 427. for joining us at our 1030 Sunday morning service. Uh, join us next week uh, at 8 o'clock, Melody Drive-In Cruise-In the, uh, Theater on East National Road outside of Springfield, uh, the 8 o'clock service, rain or shine. If you wish more information about our church uh, membership, you can call at 937-323-7508. We offer a uh, Christian day preschool, kindergarten, pre-K, nursery. Uh, you may call the school office at 937-325-4311 for more information.